And this video is going to be the culmination of everything that we've done so far. So we used tool frames, we did user frames, we set the motion of our robot from jog to world mode. Now we're going to be starting the programming of the actual robot so when we hit go it actually does a task for us. To create a new program we're going to go to the select button and this will bring up all the programs some of them are utilized some of them you cannot utilize and then we're going to go to create and then we're going to give the program a name so we're going to do the square first so let's call it square program so we're going to go options keyboard keyboard and square exit then if we need to modify anything about the actual program itself, for example, if this is not a movement of the robot, but a peripheral, then we have to go under detail. So let's go under detail and just kind of see the different things that are underneath this. So the first thing you'll see is the actual program name, the subtype, comment, and then group mask. And each one of these parts has a specific task to them. First thing is subtype. Now this is right now we have it as none, and we're going to leave it as none if we're going to just make a a simple program instruction like we usually do. If we're going to make this a button or something that is getting called upon, we can also make it a macro. So how we change it is arrow to it, and then we go choice, and now you'll see we have a couple different options, none, collection, macro. So if I go choice again, then down here we can have a comment, and this is simply just another item to describe the program. The last part, which is the group mask, you'll see that there's a one and then there's asterisks on each one of these parts right here. One means that it enables a motion group. An asterisk means it disables a motion group. The first portion here is the actual robot itself. So if you do not have a one here, the robot will not move. Now if this is a program where it's controlling a light or some sort of other digital output or analog output or input, then this mask would be become an asterisk because there will be no other motion groups. Now if we had a motion group like a traveling of a rail, or if we have other motions that are on top of the actual end of tool, then we can enable those right here down just up a little bit uh, you can see we can have a right protection which means we can disable the part which other people can change the program so ignore pause is going to be it ignores program area whether it's running with errors or not the last one is going to be your stack size um, right now this is the amount of memory that is allocated to it the maximum stack size you can go up to is 4,000 uh, sectors of memory um, but generally you want to keep this at 500 unless you specifically need it now on most programs you don't have to mess with anything that's inside this area so I'm going to just go back here with the previous, and you see square, that is of our program name, and we hit enter on it, and it will bring us into the actual program itself. So you'll see that the teach pendant has now changed. You have a couple different areas over on the right-hand side, and then you have the actual coding on the left-hand side. So when we program, there's very specific steps that we have to take. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in the right tool frame, and the right user frame. So we actually have to specify that on our program and then also when we program we have to make sure that we are in that specific tool frame when we add our point. Now when I program I like to put in headings so that it's easier to change things or debug your program if you need to or locate certain sections of your code. So the first thing we're going to do is add a heading here. So we go to new instruction so we click this on the screen, then we're going to go down to miscellaneous, and then you'll see remark. So I'm going to click remark, then I'm going to press enter on that area, which allows me to add that remark. So I'm going to go frame setup, exit, and you'll see that it shows up as a highlighted device. So you can very easily see these headings as you scroll down to your program. So let's first set up our frames. So we're going to go new instruction arrow over to where we see offset frames so we're going to go down to u tool number user tool frame number so we're going to use the first one so we're going to go to constant and then we're going to click our little keypad and we're going to type in one exit and where this tool frame number comes from if you remember from the menu setup frames 
and this is the user frame. So if I go to other tool frame, here's tool frame. So this is the pointer. So we're using tool frame number one, which is the pointer, which gives us the Z of 180 millimeters. So if I go back to that program, we're going to go select. There's our square, enter. Then I'm going to go down to the end. So you use the arrows to scroll down to the end, or because we're using this on a actual computer, we can just click end. And now let's add our user frame. So we're going to use the first user frame, which I usually leave for the world frame. So because the square is directly above it, we don't need to make a specific frame for this. Now, when we get to the circle and the triangle and the other shapes, we probably want to use a user frame other than number one or the world frame. So we're going to go new instruction, arrow over, offset frames, and then we're going to find the U frame number, click it. And then we're going to go constant and then we're going to click our object here and then one enter. So we're going to use the U tool frame number one and user frame number one. Now we have to make sure that we are actually in these frames when we program. Otherwise, we're going to get a massive amount of errors and it's going to create a huge headache. So we're going to go down to menu. Setup frames this is tool frame so let's make sure that we're on tool frame number one let's go set i and d one enter so we're on active tool frame number one let's go to other user frames and let's make sure we're on user frame number one set i and d one enter so now we're in tool frame number one and user frame number one so now when we program it's going to be based on all these points that we have set up in both of these frames let's go back to our program so let's go select enter on square and let's go down to the end so the next thing we're going to do is save a home position so we're going to have this area right here to be our home position so let's first add a remark here so let's go new instruction miscellaneous remark and then let's type in home position which will put this robot to this home position every single time when this program starts exit home position so now we have to actually save this point in space so we do that by going to add move point and we're going to go there as quickly as possible with joint mode click here so this is now saved as joint point number one so joint mode means it's going to move in a circular motion to that position. It's not going to go in a linear motion. It's a little bit faster than a linear motion, and plus it doesn't take up as much memory to get to that point. So we're going to go here. We're also going to name this point number one. So when we scroll over, so if you're on an actual teach pendant, you just use the arrow over to number one, and then we're going to add a text to it. So we're going to click text. And let's call this home position. Home pose. There we go. So now it's home position. So now point one is saved as a remark of home position. We're going to go there at 100%. So next, let's go to the end. So now that we have the home position saved, we're going to now program the actual square itself. So let's go new instruction, miscellaneous, remark. And this is going to be square program. Exit. And we're going to now move our robot so that we can find how far above the ground is the tip of this actual part. So let's scroll down here. Let's get some information and we click this square. Looking over here, this is square group. This is 200 by 200 by 20. So 200 from tip to tip, 200 from tip to tip, and then 20 off of the floor. And these are in millimeters. If we figure out where the center is, right now you can see on the actual ground X600, but if you can't see this on the ground, all you do is double click the square, and then here's the location, 600 millimeters from the world location of the actual robot itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my actual robot down to position to figure out how far I need to be to that tip. So I'm going to go to the front view, and I'm going to bring it over and then down to figure out how close I need to be. That looks really close. So now I'm gonna to go to position and let's check out what the actual position X, Y, and Z. This is 312, so if I, let's try this as negative 312 and see what happens. 
There we go. Looks like we're almost directly on there. That's pretty close. So we're going to leave it at that. Now, if you notice that it's not enough, then you can go down in size as well. Next, let's move this to the actual position of center. So what we're going to do is X is going to be 600 and Y is going to be zero move to position and now we're directly center of our robot remember that this is only part of the program this is not part of an actual teach pendant so if you were doing this on an actual robot you would jog your tip of your tool to the actual position itself to save but again because we're using the software this makes it a lot easier to use so when we move this over that 100 because this is a 200 by 200 there we go 100 release drag it back r100 there we go release now we're exactly at that first point so i'm going to save this position we're going to go from the home view down to this position right here so we're going to go add move point and we're going to do it as joint movement so there we go you'll see the little at symbol that means we are at that position so now we're going to go around doesn't matter if we want to go around clockwise or counterclockwise let's go around clockwise in this case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the next position. There we go. So it's negative 200 millimeters to the right. And let's go add move point. And let's leave it as a joint right now so we can see the difference between joint and linear. So we're going to leave them all as joints for the first round. And then we're going to go back and change it. Then I'm going to go to the next position, 200, add move point, joint movement, 100%, 200, add move point, joint. There we go. And then we're going to go back to the last part, which we do not have to move it. All we have to do is go add move point, joint, and then we're going to go back into this area right here. And if you remember, our first position right here is point two. So all we have to do is change that six to a two. So let's go to that little one, two, three, click two, exit. And you would do that on your keypad if you were on the teach pendant. So now, we're at point two, and you see now we have our square all completed. So if we go to the end, so now let's look at what happens. So let's go up to the number one and zoom on out, and let's watch this actually move. So first, we're going to do this in step mode, and we're also going to do this fairly slow to make sure that the tool is not going to, or the robot is not going to run into any obstacles. So I'm going to bring it forward. So step means it's going to do each individual line one at a time. And it's going to wait for the user to continuously hit forward. So if I go forward, hit shift forward, it's going to do U tool frame, user frame, home position. Then it's going to go to the actual home position. So once we go back, going to the home position at five, percent of the speed then it's going to do the first square going down to the first position go to the next position and I continuously run here and then it ends the program so now we're at the top so if we want to end going back to the home position let's add that home position at the end here so let's go down to end you can scroll down to that and go add move point and let's go as a joint movement and we're going to go number one here so let's click one on the keypad there we go so notice how it says home position now you can go in here and rename each one of these you can say point one point two point three point four so then we can go right here so we're at this position right here so let's go forward and then it should go to the home position back at the home position forward again brings us back to the original start so let's look at this at full speed so i'm going to go up in speed so we're at 100 percent i'm going to turn off step i'm also going to look at this from the top view so you can kind of see what joint does so i'm going to go top view there we go zoom on into this and then let's go forward So you notice how fast that was. That was super, super fast. So let's actually slow this down so we can actually see what's going on. Let's bring it down to maybe five again and hit forward. And you can see now it's tracing our actual device. 
coming up to the home view. There we go. So now we have our first program. So now let's turn off the teach pendant. And then we're going to go to auto mode. Now on the actual robot, you would switch the key to auto on the controller. You will have the teach pendant off, and then you will hit the green start button in order to do that. So in RoboPro, it's a little bit different. We have to go cycle start, and then you'll see it move. And you'll also see it gives you a trail in which it travels. So let's zoom into this trail. I'm going to go to the top view. If I zoom into this trail, you'll notice that from each of the points, it's not actually making a direct straight line to point to point. It's making an arc. So that's what joint mode does. It takes the least resistance or the least amount of math to get from point to point, which is your joint mode. Now, if you're not worried about it traveling along a straight line, this works perfectly fine. But if you're actually welding something that you need to go on a straight line, then this will not work. What's nice about joint mode is that it doesn't use up as much CPU as the linear motion, because in order for the robot to travel in a straight line, it has to do a bunch of calculations, and it's constantly doing those calculations, whereas the joint doesn't use as much calculation so it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to get rid of this profile so if you hit the plus next to profiles you'll see that. Click this item right here and go delete. So it gets rid of that profile so we don't have to constantly see that motion over and over again. So I now go into our program here. Right now our teach pendant is turned off so we need to turn it back on. Hit reset a couple times to make sure you reset any alarms. And now we're going to go into the actual program and switch this from joint to linear motion. So this is going down to point number two. Then from point number two, we want to go linearly to point number three. So I'm going to arrow over to where you see J, and we're going to switch it to linear, which automatically switches the speed from a percentage to how many millimeters per second. But it still saves the position. So let's change this from 4,000 millimeters per second. Let's change this to 2,000. And find means it goes to the actual point and stops and then moves on to the next travel. We'll talk about a little bit later about fine and continuous, but for right now, we're going to just continue on fine. So if I go to number nine, arrow over, switch it to linear, and let's change this again to 2,000. Then the last one here, going to this position, linear, and 2000, and then going back to that first point, linear, and then 2000. So now doing the actual square is a full linear process. So let's go up to number one, and we we'll hit enter on that. Let's turn off the teach pendant, hit the little green button that says cycle start, and then it will go and travel down and do what it's supposed to do. And notice how it's a straight line this time coming back up. So go to the top view. Now the actual path is full straight directly on that red line. So that is our first actual program. Next, we're going to do the triangle. Then we'll move to the circle. And then we'll do a combination of those using different frames.